Now, moving to user management, user management can be accessed again from the subscription services portal, but you can also go directly to usermanagement.bentley.com. This is again only available to administrators and co administrators. And this is where administrators and co admins would maintain their users, groups, enterprise roles, and can also manage fulfillment contacts. I want to say something about the difference between Admins, co-admins, and fulfillment contacts. By default, when an account joins Bentley's or sets up a contract, the fulfillment contract is given admin rights. This doesn't need to be the case. The fulfillment contract usually is the person receiving the billing-related documents, such as, for example, renewal notices, invoices, and other fulfillment documents that don't have necessarily relation to you know, granting access or revoking access. So the fulfillment contacts don't need to be the admins and the admins don't need to be the fulfillment contacts, even though they, they can be combined. Another thing to say is that in the past, uh, before August 2020, organizations had to contact Bentley to add new fulfillment contacts and change them, edit them. Now this can be done by an administrator or a co-admin um, they can add and remove the, their fulfillment contacts. So, you know, if the person set up at the beginning of your engagement with Bentley, it's not the relevant person to be the fulfillment contacts, you can easily administrate that and change that. But every account should have, uh, this sum up, one fulfillment contact and one administrator. This is fundamental. And it can be the same person, but it doesn't necessarily. Now, User registration. This is a very important step of the, the licensing workflow, let's say. It is fundamental for administrators to register their users, otherwise they won't benefit from the subscription entitlement service. You won't benefit from seeing monitoring usage, you won't be able to monitor usage and the reports will come flawed, let's say. It will be more difficult for you to track usage if you don't have your users properly registered. Once they are registered, it's fundamental as well that the users have connection client installed and sign in to it. You would have your email and a password created by the user to sign in on connection client. Connection client can be set up to run by default or on startup, let's say, of your laptops or desktops. And it's this little application that's usually running on the background. Let's say this is your credential to access anything inside of Bentley, both as a general user of the software, for example, or as an administrator. If you don't have connection client active or signed in, you might not be able to access the licenses you want to, or your usage might not be tracked by your administrator as well. So it is fundamental to have that running every time you want to access any of the products. There is no charge to use the connection client. It's not a charged application. It's just a way to communicate what you're doing in your machines, what's happening in the machines uh, to the administrator and also to Bentley. It's also dangerous to not run a connection client as you can incur in extra charges. For example, if by any chance a checkout, um, a license for one application is checked out and there is no reporting on connection client. This can lead to extra charges. Another interesting point is that organizations can federate with Bentley, so that will allow single sign-on SSO. This removes the need to register users manually. New users can will be created automatically when they log in for the first time. And depending on the setup created, uh, configured by the administrators and the code or code means, they can be automatically accepted and granted access, or they can be submit a request to access and the administrators will then either approve or reject it. And this is going to happen again in the user management section or menu, where you see on the left hand side, the pending approvals, that's where everything's going to pop up and where you can add approve or, or reject uh, requests for access.
Here in the user management, another things that I would like to say is also that beyond the user management and the groups you can you can create and manage in the enterprise roles, you can see and track. Of course, I don't have administrator access to many of our portals internally, so I couldn't display or do a live demo, unfortunately. One of the key functionalities I like to highlight is that you can lock and unlock access to users, and that's why I highlighted the padlocks there. Uh, which allow you, you know, to just restrict access from someone either temporarily or no, on a permanent basis. On to the right hand side, there's an option to do bulk operation, so we can bulk import users. This is fairly straightforward and easy to do. Or you can add users manually one by one. So I'll touch about, again on user registration a little bit further in our presentation, as there's another point to be made. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.